Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. I have been mixing up a storm in the studio using the custom palette that I introduced to you last week. So I have 15 Daniel Smith watercolour paints that I'm using and I have been mixing them up and seeing what combinations I really love. And it's been great fun to just spend time in my sketchbooks exploring new colours and getting to know new colours and new materials does take a bit of time. So it's worth spending a session like this. And it's also a very relaxing way to make art. So the first thing I did was pull out my Fabriano Venezia sketchbook. And this sketchbook doesn't have the most fantastic paper in it for watercolour, but it is good enough for me to get a feel for colours. And I took a very simple approach of just combining two colours quite randomly, just picking two of the colours out of my custom palette and seeing how they combine together and just working on adding different quantities of one paint into the other, so building it up. So as I predicted, the Nickel Azo Yellow and the Aussie Red Gold mixes a fantastic range of greens when you combine them with the blues in the palette. I also knew that I'd get some lovely peaches using the quinacridone coral, bright purples with the quinacridone rose and the French ultramarine. I particularly love this mix here, which has a lot of the French ultramarine and just a little tiny bit of the quinacridone rose. It's a gorgeous bluish purple. I am head over heels in love with Jadeite Genuine as a colour on its own. It also mixes gorgeous, more muted greens if you combine it with burnt sienna or if you combine it with the opposite of green. So if you pop in some red, it's going to give you a little bit more of a muted green. One thing I discovered through this process is that some of the pigments are very dominant and bossy pigments and the nickel azo yellow in particular, it just wants to take over colours. So I did find with some of those mixes that as soon as I added in a little bit of the yellow and also the Aussie red gold, sometimes I ended up with that colour taking over. I've learned that I need to be a little bit lighter with my touch when it comes to those pigments. The quinacridones are also very vibrant pigments too and they can overpower things like lavender and moon glow quite easily. I came up with some nice teals using the cerulean blue and the jadeite. Bright oranges are easy to get with this particular palette. I love the lavender when combined with the iridescent goldstone. It creates such a nice granulating texture, subtle shimmer. I really like this iridescent gold. You can add it into any colour. I do need to explore the cobalt teal blue a little bit more. I will get to that eventually. But once I had done this page of mixes, I then decided to paint out some of my favourites in the grid format that I used last week. I've been really enjoying working with these little squares. There's something so appealing and therapeutic about it. Next time I might actually draw out the squares and paint them in rather than using the masking tape. So I painted out on the grid some of my favourite mixes and you can see that this grid is quite a bit more muted than when I painted out the colours straight out of the tube. When I painted the colours straight out of the tube, they were really bright and some people even commented that this was so different to other custom palettes that I've shared. But as I said at the beginning of this video, I really wanted this palette to be focused on mixing potential and have more primary colours in it and opportunities for me to come up with a lot of different greens, turquoises, teals, pinks, earthy colours and all the rest. And this palette is definitely ticking that box. So a few of my favourite mixes so far are definitely the Indian Throne Blue with the Nickel Azo Yellow, Loving the Lavender with the Iridescent Gold, 
all the pink colours that you can get are fantastic. Having the buff titanium in the palette does allow you to get a little bit of opacity. Some of these colours are a bit more opaque and muted. You just need to be mindful though that that does bring in a little bit of dullness. I was also able to get a really nice scarlet red, a sort of warmer red by mixing together the quinacridone coral and the Aussie red gold. And there's all sorts of mixes that create a really nice luminous green gold color. So that's a color that's quite easy to mix from this palette. And over here, I have a couple of mixes with quinacridone rose in them. This one with the moon glow and this one with the French ultramarine. So once I'd mixed up some of these colors, started to get a better feel for the palette, I decided to create a little sketchbook painting. I've been really enjoying working in this Archer's travel sketchbook and doing little paintings. Many of them are geometric inspired pieces. I'm continuing to get inspiration from the paintings for the future book that features the abstract artist Hilma F. Clint. And in this piece, what I wanted to do was contrast wonky diamond shapes with a more structured pattern using pen. So I'm using a gel pen in combination with watercolor paint. I didn't really have much of a plan for this painting. I just wanted to lay down some of those beautiful colors and mixes and see what came through. I'm absolutely loving the lavender color and the jadeite color. Both of them are really beautiful straight out of the tube, but I've also included some mixes. You can get some really lovely muted tones by using moon glow and buff titanium in some of the mixes. I ended up pulling the tape up partway through and realizing that I hadn't fully used the frame and I didn't really like how it looked. So I put the tape back down and ended up painting in some more triangles around the edge using quadacridone rose. And of course, I just kept on tinkering, which is often the case with me, adding in a few more shapes using my pen and building up the pattern. Possibly I took it a little bit too far, but that's, that's okay. That's the perfect place to experiment and push that limit to see what that limit is. So I'm always okay with that in a sketchbook. That's what sketchbooks are for. I'm actually still really happy with how it turned out and it's a lovely addition to this geometric sketchbook which is filled with all sorts of different patterns and it's one of my favourite places to relax and unwind with my art. It's a very meditative and enjoyable process. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I'm experimenting and continuing to learn about these new colours I will continue along this path and also start bringing in more mixed media. This painting is a little bit more structured and tight than what I would normally do and the colours are a little bit different, but it's a great way to get a feel for things. I like working a little looser and also bringing in other supplies, which is the kind of work you'll see in my upcoming six week course modern mixed media where I do combine watercolor with all sorts of different things. So if you are interested in learning more about how I use watercolor in conjunction with other suppliers, make sure that you check the link in the description and get your name onto my newsletter list so that you're the first to know when registration opens. Thank you everybody for watching. I apologize because I have got a cold at the moment, so I do have a bit of a croaky voice, but I do hope this video has given you some ideas around how you can explore your materials.